We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. You are listening to The Underground Marketing Conspiracy, a secret ritual where entrepreneurs acquire highly classified and confidential business knowledge that the top 1% of income earners don't want you to know. And now, your host, Matty Milligan. What is happening, my fellow conspirator and conspirators? Welcome to another episode of the Underground Marketing Conspiracy. Woo! Now, what I would like to talk to you today about is to, how to structure and organize your sales letters. Sometimes I'll see sales letters and copywriting in general where it's so disorganized and I'm not sure what the main message or idea is behind the campaign. It's just a lot of generic stuff and it looks like they're just filling in the blank. So the first thing I would suggest is I know a lot of the times you get these templates, whether it's from WordPress, like Thrive Themes, or you buy a template or you're using a theme or someone shared a funnel link with you, something like that, and you're just taking their design and plugging in your copy. I think this is one of the quickest ways to disaster because what I would recommend doing is first of all writing all the copy first right taking your sales letter writing that out first planning out your entire promotion campaign and then doing the design after when I look at my steps to how I personally run campaigns that's like what is it I think it's step number yeah, step number 10. <laughs> so there's a bunch of steps in between that I eventually get to one by one, but that's one of the last steps, right? I need to really iron out all the copywriting first before I add that, right? Because design is something you use to boost the effectiveness of your promotion, right? It shouldn't be the main thing be before everything. It's like, oh, here's the design. Now let's plug in the copy. I don't think like that. You could argue, and I'm sure there are people out there that it's like, oh, design is really first. And I don't necessarily agree with that, to be honest. I think that words are very powerful, right? I think that just showing people a bunch of colors and making it look cool, that's one thing. But communication is super important, people, right? Even when you look back in the day from all the ancient civilizations, they dealt with written language. It was something that they would, when you look at the Egyptians, you would see all their hieroglyphics, right? And when you even look at Canada, where there's First Nations, they have all sorts of cool storyboarding, right? And art from how they communicate with one another and how they share their legends and stories of all their heroes and culture and how they pass that on from generation to generation. But again, it all comes down to the writing and the language, right? That's what's super important. So first thing is with your sales letters right i always recommend with any marketing campaign come up with your big idea first that's the most important part have that all ironed out make sure that you've tested that make sure that you've talked to other people about it make sure that you fully validated that going through that and then when it does come down eventually to your sales letter in terms of structuring it for how it's going to look on the page this again is where people send this to me for copy editing and i'm just like oh my god this is all right, like right, let's work on this a little bit and structure it. And what I like to do is I like to have the headline first. So that's the first thing you write and then write the lead. There's a really good book on leads called Great Leads. I don't remember who the name of the offer is, but he gives six different ways you can start leading and the different types of leads that you can have. So you want to have the lead next after the headline. Then after that, before you start writing out all that in-between stuff is fill out all the subheads between everything between all those other things and basically all the way down to the call to action button that's the best way to structure your sales letters and then from there what you're gonna that just allows you to look at it because if you think about this you can write the best promotion in the world and have that on your your landing page but People are going to scan through it, right? And they're not going to read all the in-between stuff, so they just want a quick glimpse of what the whole message is about, right? So when people scan from the headline to the lead, and then they start reading all those subheads down to the call to action button, they're getting the gist of the story. That's what your sales letter really needs to do. And 
I see so many people where it's just disorganized and they're not breaking up the different paragraphs with these these subheads and subheads are basically just these mini headlines in some cases or just really good bullet points right that are usually focused on a claim as well as some sort of objection that someone has and they they overcome them with each of those right so you're bringing it up for people and then overcoming it with all the body copy in between each of the sales heads or sorry the subheads that you have and in terms of thinking about this, this way you're thinking from the customer, right? Sure, there are some people, you'd love them to read them, every single person to read it, where they read from beginning to end, right? But some people scan up and down, right? Where they read a section and they go back up and then down again and then up. If you use tools, for example, like Hotjar or Lucky Orange or Inspectlet or even Mouseflow, where you can look at what people are doing on your page, when you look at the way people read, it's, it's very odd, right? They scan down the page like maybe they look at the above the fold for a few seconds and then they scan down to some ran random section and then stop and then you look at what they're doing with their mouse and they go back up and then down and then up and then back to the top again to then to the very bottom and then either they leave or they click away or they they do that for a while and then click and then submit and then go to the next page when you have it set up again in that way people don't need to read all that in between things right people that are serious though serious buyers are probably going to do that and if you do video sales letters, for example, that's something where you do force people to read and listen to every single word in your letter, right? Which is why those are so effective. But one thing you can do, which I do, is I'll give the, and I've seen more and more people doing this with their webinars, is where they'll show you on the webinar page the option, a little button, where if you click, it'll just go to a sales letter version of that same webinar. And again, when I look at those ones, I'm like, okay, there we go. And I talked about this in one of my Facebook groups I'm involved in, and this dude who I know who's one of the, probably the best funnel builders that I've seen, and just a very knowledgeable dude who's been in this. And he, when I told, when I talked about this in a group, he mentioned, he's like, oh yeah, I heard about this 20 years ago from Dan Kennedy. It's called dual readership, where you basically just have it so that you you have it the way where anyone can read it from beginning to end but you're also giving it the option where people can scan down the page and really fill in the blanks themselves when and find the answers to their questions so that's really the most effective way to structure your sales letters and then once you have all that in place then you can go ahead and plug it into whatever template or funnel theme that you have and it's just going to look a lot easier, a lot better. And then from there, you can do all the design, right? And structure everything, add images to the right sections to really enhance and boost what people are going to do on that page. Anything you're describing, anything visual, it's probably best to have an image as well in that sales letter. And I think that if you're showing people statistics, you can say the statistics in the letter, but then having a graph as well, that's going to help boost what people see visually right when they see a graph going low to high they're usually that's usually like a credibility factor or if you want the reverse where you want to show that people have lost money doing stupid things where you're essentially showing them the things that haven't worked in the past then have the graph go from up to down right just especially men men are more visual people as well so when you think about this when you show them that visual thing and if, if you're if it's something where you're a person, like show your picture, right? Make sure you have a good photo of yourself looking very professional. If you're a doctor, obviously, if you show yourself in a white robe or cloak or whatever those things are called, white jacket, it's going to position you as a doctor and people are going to believe it a lot, a lot easier because they see you and you look like a doctor, which enhances your authority and gives your gives another element of proof to your entire sales letter. And... I think that doing that, I won't go into any sort of, I think that's something where I would call that, it's referred to, I believe, as copyboarding, where you essentially just plan out the entire letter in advance and then just fill everything in between, right? And that just allows you to really organize how everything should fit in between. And it hits all of the, the best things that you really want to say because a lot of people, they write the headline and the lead and they just start running writing from beginning to end. And that, for me, is very scary it's like this just prevents you and saves you so much time from writing writing any sort of sales letter and you can do this as well in all sorts of things like if you want to do this if you again already have a following and you want to run some sort of 
product launch funnel, right? Like the Jeff Walker method, where it's like called a sideways sales letter. You can do this method at the same time, right? But then in this case, it's like again, have have the landing page where it has that same headline that you're that you want to use for the campaign for the big idea, and then have each of the I would say probably cover one of the objections in each of the videos and then overcome that and show them elements of proof to overcome that claim and to make it to prove your claim and use all sorts of examples if you have those and then show the benefit really of having what you're going to be selling whatever sort of vehicle or opportunity or course or coaching or consulting or service you're going to provide for that person maybe it's even for a physical product as well and a lot of these questions as i've talked about in the past you'll need to do your research online to find the objections that people have maybe sit down with a group of co-workers or other marketers or even if you have contact with some sort of inner circle or maybe you're a mastermind talk with them about all the objections and make a list of them and then from there you'll need you'll know exactly what you need to do to overcome all of those objections in your customer's mind right and again you'll need to know who you want to serve you'll need to understand their demographics and psychographics and then from there it's doing some research figuring out their objections and their false beliefs listing those out and then putting those into your sales letters and that's really the best way to strategically overcome all their objections and get them to ultimately just click that call to action button give you the credit card information and then you can serve them better hope you enjoyed today's episode and if you did in fact like what i talked about consider subscribing or maybe you know someone who has a small to medium maybe even an enterprise size business and maybe they're struggling right now they want to know some tips on improving their online presence on social media maybe they want to figure out a better web strategy to boost their sales and build their following online you can share this podcast with them for sure once again my name is maddie milligan and i will see you next time on another episode of the underground marketing conspiracy Ooh.